Now we'll talk about creating raster images from your vector graphics. There's multiple reasons why you really want to know how to, to do this. Um, one is you want to avoid multiple resizing of your images in Photoshop. So you're best to get it the size that you want it in the vector program, most likely Illustrator, and then export it. And then if you need another version of it at a different size, you go back into Illustrator, resize it, and then export it. Uh, reasons that you need to do this, uh, the abundance of different devices that we have now. Um, often if you're entering a design in a contest, they'll give you very specific pixel dimensions that they would like it. And probably the number one reason is for web design. When you have a portfolio, you do not want your images bouncing around all over in, in height and width. Now, if an image is taller than it is wide, and then one comes up that's wider than it is tall, you obviously can't make them all the same ratio. So you have to stick with that. But ultimately what you have to do is say, okay, this size that I'm kind of making with my mouse is the size uh, that all of my images are going to be contained in. So now let's imagine for a second that we measure the pixel dimensions of this and we come out with 1600 pixels wide by 1200 pixels tall. That means that every image cannot be larger than 1200 pixels tall, nor can it be wider than 1600 pixels wide, but it must hit one of those numbers right on the nose to give you consistency. So either the, the height has to be exactly 1200 pixels or the width has to be, and let me find one that's clearly wider than it is tall here, or the width has to be 1600 pixels wide. Now I've been working with students for quite a few years on trying to accomplish this and I think I've seen like every misinterpretation of this possible. So I've devised a system that I think is pretty much foolproof as long as you follow every step that I give and you don't try to wing it or get ahead of me and assume that you know where I'm going with this. Now the sizes that I mentioned in my example are actually the sizes that I want you to work with. So 1600 wide, 1200 tall. That's not an exact that you hit both numbers. That's the maximums, but you have to hit one of them as will be explained or at least done in a way that you can't go wrong. Um, so I do ask for a very specific file from you. You do not want to do this step until you've completed what was in the previous video and turned in or, or have your Illustrator file ready to turn in. So what you're going to want to do is save this one last time if you haven't already. Keep it in that folder that says turn into Steve and then you're going to make another folder on your desktop and you're going to call that one delete soon. And after you've created that folder, you're going to go back to Illustrator and you're going to save out a version of this file inside of delete soon. And maybe in that one, you add four raster to the end of it. Save it into the delete soon file. It is going to be best to work on the original file where the text is still text. Now, I guess if you were at college and you did this at home and you can't see the fonts, then you're kind of going to be forced to, to work on this one. But otherwise, let's do some cleanup. We'll click on the artboard tool. Click on the artboards that we don't need and go back to the selection tool and select all of the stuff we don't need no longer need any instance of the test from the previous video two very important things is that you turn off bleeds and that you turn on scale stroke and effects so to turn off the bleeds and just in case you don't know what bleeds are hopefully you do um, a bleed is what you set up in the file so that when you have work that goes to the edge, that it goes beyond the edge and bleeds out typically by an eighth of an inch. Very important 
in print-based work. Um, however, if you have the bleeds left on in the document, it's kind of strange, but it actually adds it to the image when you export it, and then you're wondering why you can never get the numbers right. So just simply go up to File, Document Setup, and then right here, zero out the bleeds. Okay, the other thing that's important is if you have, and I don't in here, but if you have any strokes or, or any vector effects, you want to go over to the scale tool. I'm going to set this to, to read scale tool, and then I'm going to double click on it, and I want to select this scale stroke and effects. And what that does is let's say that you had a one point stroke on your work and you ended up having to make it approximately 60% of the size that it was. Well, rather than have the stroke now bigger than it should be, it would convert that stroke down to 0.6 instead of one point. Next step is going to be to make a new art board with our work on it and scale that down to or, or up to the size of the artboard that we need to make this image that maximizes a 1600 by 1200 pixel area. Now in my example, my work is wider, or I'm sorry, clearly taller than it is wide. But I can tell you that if you follow these steps exactly, it will work out the same whether it's wider or tall. So for brevity, I'm just going to show you the tall image. But then I'll make a separate video. It'll be listed right after this one, and it'll show me working on a video that's wider than tall, just so you can see the, the subtle little differences. Now, for this step, we want to be working in pixels, and currently I'm set up in inches. So what I'm going to do is go Command R to bring out the rulers, and then I'm going to go up into the ruler, and I am going to right click and I'm going to select pixels. Then I'm going to go over to the artboard tool and a good distance away, don't want to get too close, I am going to click and drag out an artboard and I'm going to pay attention to what the smart guys are telling me and get something that's around 1600 by 1200. I don't have to be exact. In fact, trying to get it exact will drive you crazy. So we're just going to make sure that we're clearly over then once we release the mouse, we're going to go up here inside of Properties, and we are going to set the width at exactly 1600. Make sure that this is unlinked so that we can set the width and the height independently. And I'm going to set the height at 1200. So I now have my original artboard and a brand new artboard that is 1600 pixels wide by 1200 pixels tall. What we want to do is get in close to our original work and we want to draw a rectangle over the work but only over the part of the work that we would see. And this is a perfect example is whenever you have a bleed, this part that's outside of the artboard Hopefully you can see it here when I zoom in. See, this is my original artboard. Everything outside of that is not what I want to recreate. I want to recreate exactly what would be printed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rectangle tool and I'm going to select a color that's clearly different than anything on there. Uh, just, you know, so it sticks out like a sore thumb. And I want to make sure that I'm right at the intersect here. And then I want to drag down all the way to the other corner and with the use of those smart guides on it that'll be helpful here I, this may not render for you to see it so i'll just go back i know that it started exactly in the right place here and then i'll click on here click and drag until i get right exactly in that other corner in fact i'm going to stop just shy so that I can zoom in because it's very critical that we get this exact. Okay, now I know that I'm right corner to corner 
exactly. Again, it's important that no layers are locked or sublayers are locked. That's the case. Turn that off as I've explained in the uh, previous video. And then what you want to do is grab a selection of everything that's contained in the original artboard, including the new thing we just drew on there. And we're going to click, drag, hold down the option key to make a copy of that. And then we are simply going to maximize this funky color, not the overall, including the bleed, but just the new color that we made. And we are going to scale this with the shift key held down and either touch the top and the bottom or the sides. Now it's obvious in this case what it's going to be. We're going to max out at the top and the bottom, carefully holding down the shift key. And I just wanted to show you that if you do hold down the option key when you drag this, you will get a copy. I didn't because I took too long doing it while I was explaining. But now we're going to zoom in here. And we are going to... And at this point, it's probably a smart idea to select all of this one more time and go Object Group. So that now we can't select accidentally just one little piece of this. And then we want to move that funky color so that it is right on the edge of the artboard. And it's going to take some finessing to get there. We are going to have to zoom in with our mouse. And you can make the de decision to do um, the top and a corner at the same time because it may save you a little bit of work overall. Then what we need to do is go down to the bottom or the other corner and see how close we are. Not too bad. So what we'll do is we'll go right here to this corner, opposite corner of where we nested in. And we're going to make sure that we click and drag holding the shift key down so we do not stretch or squish our work. Get that exact on the mark so that that pink funky color that you use right on it. Whoops, hard to do and talk at the same time. And sometimes turning off different snaps can help. I think that's a problem I have right now. So I'm going to go up to view. I'm going to see what kind of snapping I have turned on. It looks like it's set to snap to grid, snap to pixels. Oh, maybe none of these are. See, I think that turned it back on. Yeah. Okay, so none of these have a check check mark next to them. So I guess I'll just have to be more patient. Very careful when you resize things in Illustrator. When you're holding down that shift key to constrain the proportions, it's important that you release the mouse first and then the shift key second. Um, then once you've done that step, you're going to either have to move in the top and the bottom or the sides. So in my case, since I clearly have the white space left over on the sides or one side because I moved it over close to the left side, then all I have to do is resize my artboard very carefully so that it also ends up right at that funky color. So I enter the artboard tool, I come over to here, cursor right over that handle and I move that in to where I think it's pretty close and then I'm going to zoom way in and get it exact. Once I have it exact I'm just going to zoom around the whole image and make sure that that artboard is where I expect it to end. Okay and if you have an actual bleed this won't be an issue but in the rare instance that you're not working with a bleed and you have a background and that background just went right to the very edge of your artboard, you should go in and make it bigger than the background. And if it's an image, you may have to bring the size of the image up a little bit. I'll show in an upcoming video what can happen if you don't and, and probably better explain that. But the very next video will help anyone who has a wider than tall image and couldn't get the gist of it from this one. And then after that, we'll continue off from here.